Hi there, Belinda Kerr here from Recruitment Garage. I recently attended the Tech Expo, which was part of the uh, CSA conference in Sydney uh, last week. And I thought this quick video would be a nice summary. Really, it's just my notes from the day, but I thought it could give you a little bit more of an insight into what's happening with tech uh, and recruitment these days. I heard an interesting stat the other day. There's 22,000 pieces of tech that are applicable to recruitment so no wonder we're all a little bit overwhelmed sometimes. So there was a few different things that we spoke about. There was a, a, a focus on automation I guess which is a hot topic at the moment. You know how do we really leverage our time and our resources for better results and the first thing that came up was chatbots. Uh, so they did a quick poll of the audience and from memory they were saying that uh, only four of the people had uh, tried a chatbot and 37 of them hadn't. So that was that was quite interesting to me. I thought it would have been higher. And then they discussed some of the applications and some of the different things that they have done with chatbots. So let me kind of give you a little bit of a, an overview of, of what that conversation was about. Yeah, so chatbots, there was a couple of interesting things. And what's I think interesting about chatbots is they're becoming more acceptable and more commonplace. I think all of us now expect to, you know, we go onto a new site and we sign up for something, we kind of expect a, a chatbot to try and help us do something and we're, all, we're almost getting, we're getting used to it. So Mark from People to People was in fact saying that they're finding it very good for those low level admin processes and there was a particular focus on temp but you could certainly use this right across your business. So things like people submitting or updating their licenses or filling in timesheets or you know just asking low level questions and, and letting people know when they're available. Those sorts of things seem to work very well. There's also a pitch fest on the day which was interesting that had four or five different companies pitching and one of those companies was an AI business called uh, Smart AI and one they've got three parts to their business but one of them was really driving uh, really working with people's databases and AI and making sure that they are really leveraging what they can do there. So maybe one to check out uh, for some more information on what's happening with, with some of the companies that are doing that. And in fact, they won the Pitch Fest. So it was, that was pretty interesting. Actually, something else that was interesting with chatbots before I move on to the next thing was uh, an example of an Australian company who had put a, a, a voice chatbot in, but it had an American accent. And what happened was it potentially alienated the audience a little bit. So I guess if you're doing a live chatbot, you need to make sure that the the accent is probably the accent of the of, of where your company is because it just seemed to be a little bit of a disconnect. So sometimes with automation we need to maybe bring it just back a little bit. So I'm sure that will change and, and, and develop over time. But that was interesting that they said that they felt that, you know, literally it was the accent that just wasn't quite right in that instance. And then, of course, closely linked to uh, chatbots, you have live chat. And there was another example, again, from, from Market People to People, where they had uh, certainly tried live chat and, you know, big company, so probably lots of lots of people coming through. And they actually had grads at the, the back end managing that. But that ended up being a little bit not as cost effective as they had hoped. So... Um, I guess, again, you know, these are all things that you potentially want to try in your business, but be mindful that sometimes, you know, if we're looking for more automation and trying to save money, we don't want to be spending more money to do that. So certainly people are trying it and testing it, but that was feedback from, from Mark. And then moving more into automation and how can we use tech and outsourcing to, you know, really cut back on the hours in our business and the costs in our business. And you so it's more of them, the, the guys in the pitch fest, there was a uh, reference checking business, there was a profiling business where they put together the profile for you. Now, when I was recruiting, I remember it used to take me, oh, I don't know, like 45 minutes to fighting with PDFs and Word and all that kind of stuff to get these, um, you know, put your summary with CVs and send it across so it looked nice to the client. And now you can, you know, you can outsource this to these clients and they'll do it for you at a, at a much more cost effective uh, rate than you can do it on your own. And these companies have thought about all the problems that come up like, you know, security or, you know, does it give an accurate representation of uh, the, uh, the person themselves, that sort of stuff. So the good tech companies out there are working with the industry to ask them all the right questions. So if you've kind of got any preconceived ideas about why these things may or may not work for you, I would still explore them because more often than not, you're going to find that the tech companies have 
thought about those problems and um, have very good solutions. The other example was a reference checking company called Referu, and again, there's there's more of them, um, but they had been working closely with the industry and you know the questions that had come up about security and different things had all been managed very well very well so you know what if my you know my mate you know their mate fills it out for them those sorts of things they're all covered off so if they seem like a, a good option for you uh, on the surface they may well be and I would invite you to, to check out some of these technology solutions because a lot of this tech doesn't um, mean big changes to your business. It's just something that you can try. If it works for you, great, keep it and embed it into your business or not. So yeah, they were two really interesting pieces of tech that I thought and you know, all moving toward automating your business step by step, I guess. Something else that was interesting too was around customer experience. There's a real increase in people sending out surveys on, on different things, you know, how did you find our experience, all that sort of stuff, getting net promoter scores, all those sorts of things, which are great. But really the thought was there is so much of this. If you're going to be sending out surveys, make sure that they're easy to complete, you know, not overbearing, not too many of them because people are you know, every time you get a, a support call, you get a, you know, feedback, how was our support, happy face, sad face, etc. So just something to bear in mind, I thought. Then, of course, there was that lovely topic of candidate acquisition, one that we all love to talk about and find the magic pill to, to solve. Really what it boiled down to is there is no one solution. You know, over here you've got, indeed, you've got Boolean searches, you've got your databases, you've got all these different ways that you can find candidates, job ads, LinkedIn, etc., etc. I'm very you know, traditional, well, mostly very traditional methods. And then over on the other side, you've got your marketing piece. And really all these things are working together. So in marketing, you've got, you know, your website, your SEO, you know, driving driving traffic to your site. And, you know, all of these things should be working together. So there is no one solution, but what we are really looking to do is to drive everybody into your database so that they are nurtured, they're there, and we can communicate with them regularly. So that was the... That was the, I guess, overriding thought there is really what we're wanting. It doesn't really matter what channel, as long as they're coming in to your database, you know who they are, where they are, and how to communicate with them so that you can put the right people, obviously, in front of the right clients. One of the interesting things I heard there, Chris, who runs a recruitment marketing agency called Prominence, he had a client recently that did a Snapchat, a Snapchat campaign rather uh, with uh, blue collar workers that worked incredibly well. So it, it's interesting to see how different people are using social media, so you know Facebook, Instagram, all those sorts of things that you know just a few years ago you know weren't really on the radar. So that was interesting, I thought. So that's it really, just a quick summary of the notes I took on the day. Hope you find it interesting and um, have a great week.